Good afternoon again. This is Ross Warner Hi. with Impact Wrestling. We'd like to welcome everybody to this week's media teleconference as we kick off February. I figure it's a perfect month, the Valentine's Day month. Let's bring in our two special guests, Braxton Sutter. How you doing, Braxton? Hey, what's going on? Good to hear from you. Always good talking to you. And in addition, we'd also for sure like to welcome one of our favorite knockouts. So let's welcome Allie. Hey, hey. How's it going with you two? Pretty good, man. I'm sipping a coffee, no complaints. Pretty happy. <laughs> All right, yeah, you a, a latte, cappuccino. What do, what do you get at Starbucks there, Allie? You know what? I'm a plain Jane. I just like coffee. That said, sometimes I'll do cold brew. But I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a coffee girl, not a latte girl. All right. Braxton, what about <laughs> yourself? Straight black, ma'am. Straight black coffee, and if I if I need it, I'll throw a little shot of espresso in there. All right. Well, how are things going for you guys? Let's uh, a lot lots going on in Impact Wrestling these days. Braxton, what's uh, what's the latest with you? What's 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 going on? Um, I was not a little like I was on a little bit of a break there, but um, I mean I think it was good because you know with that time I got to do some other stuff. Uh, get my body, you know help with some injuries to get my body right to get in better shape i started a podcast and then uh you know we just went into some tapings and i got to do some more i got to do some better stuff so i don't know like i, I don't know i always try to make a positive about everything so when uh when i had a little bit of breathing time in there because i was kind of like in limbo it's like i was doing like exhibition stuff and then outside exhibition stuff and then things with Ali. but now now i think things are bouncing back so things are good the recording has started. And Allie, yourself, what's uh, what's going on with you? Oh my gosh, so many things, so many things. I'm so excited for everything that we filmed uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm so jazzed for those episodes to air. I think people would be really happy and excited. It's been good. I've been so busy. I feel like I have not had a break between Impact and Indies, and and it's been I've been very busy. <laughs> All right, well, we will open it up for media questions. Uh, but first, I do have to ask both of you two. We're a couple weeks away. Uh, I'm going to put the pressure on uh, BS first. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Oh, man. Yeah, BS. BS, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what do you have planned for me for Valentine's Day? We, like, this is going to be the most boring the most boring answer of all time. We, uh, I don't know, man, we're, we're real homebodies. Like, whenever we get the opportunity <laughs> to stay home, we do mainly uh, a lot of it has to do with our dog because he can't stay home by himself for ten minutes, otherwise he howls <laughs> and our na our neighbors go insane. So whenever we can stay home with him, we do uh, when we're not traveling. But if, why if, are you I mean, making some vegan pizza, Braxton? You make the vegan. Be Allie makes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vegan, yeah. But but it's, yeah, but it's Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. I think maybe you should roll up your sleeves and try to make some vegan pizza for your wife. <laughs> 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 it would be, it would be <laughs> terrible. Like, like, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not I'm not vegan, and like I prefer Ali's vegan pizza over actually ordering out for actual pizza. Like it's it's awesome. She puts maple syrup on the crust. It's, it's sweet, man. So if I made it, for you one day, they, Ross. They would yeah, it would be a disaster. Uh, that that is a deal. I will take you up on that, Ali. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and do I? Uh, I mean, I I, I, I know. Braxton, you were talking about a bunch of uh, chocolates and roses. Is that? I mean, I assume that's a given. That you know, you'd mentioned to me them. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, those are those are cliche answers. That's you know, that's a, that's yeah, that stuff's a given. But you know, if we do do it, it'll literally be we might go to the. BS movies, knows the way to my go. heart. BS yeah, knows the way to my is, heart. Do you know what the way to my heart is, Ross? It's uh, coffee and food. <laughs> well, I was going to say chocolate there. I was, so I was you know at least in, in the right direction. Yeah, yeah you're in the room right range. Around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty. Well, again, we will open it up for uh, questions from the media. Unmuted. If you would, please identify yourself, your media outlet, and please limit it to one question, and then we'll come back, uh, time permitting, for a, a second or third question. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound or hash. Thank you. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask a question, please, your request has been received. One other thing also, uh, media, if you would please make sure you uh, specify if the question is for Braxton, for Allie, and or for both of them. 
You may now ask your question. Well, first and foremost, uh, this is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com, and I, I just have to say off the bat, Braxton, uh, how much better shape are you going to get in, number one? <laughs> Seriously. Big Ray, man. This what's is go- great. <laughs> what's going on, bud? How are you? Dude, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to go backwards in time. You know what I mean? Just, keep, just like get better with age, like a fine wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it's a 12 pack instead of an eight pack. Wonderful. Okay. So, <laughs> the question is actually for both of you, and, and it's kind of a, well, all right. For Ali, your 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 character mm-hmm. has evolved mm-hmm. so much in such a short time. Uh, my question for you is, you know, what what's going to be next in the evolution of Ali and for Braxton? My personal and humble opinion is that you have absolutely been, in my humble opinion, underutilized in that company. And I know the work that you do, and I think you're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So I just wanted to know Thanks. where you guys see yourselves moving forward, and you guys are, like, the best. Yeah, Aww, that was so sweet. Thank you. Uh, just being honest. <laughs> uh, um, if you ask, do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so... What's been really neat about the whole Alley um, character, and it was such a drastic change from what I was doing on the indies before Impact. Um, for, I don't know if anybody followed me as Cherry Bomb, but um, Alley and Cherry Bomb are just two completely different characters, like totally night and day. Um, and it's been really cool to sort of be a part of this evolution of the character, and and, and for me personally to come in as um, Maria's apprentice and then um, slowly, you know, start to fight back and and learn how to wrestle, quote, unquote. (laughs) Um, And then, uh, you know, to actually work up the courage to go after the knockout uh, championship has been like a really cool journey for me. Um, And I think obviously the next step would be to win the knockout uh, championship. I think that would be uh, very cool for the character and for myself. (laughs) Braxton? Um, with what you were saying, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I definitely think I can do more. Um, but I, now at the same note, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of carry off here for a second. Like, uh, everything can't be at a high all the time. Like, uh, I don't know, take like, take like the walking dead for instance. Like I always like a lot of my, a lot of times my big like problem with the walking dead is like, They'll have really, really good episodes, but then they have their filler episodes. And like a lot of people say, it's like, yeah, because it can't be high spots all the time. You know what I mean? You have to have your lulls. And I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of good guys have gone to a lot of big companies, and you know, they might start off hot, they drizzle down, then they get they, you know, then they it goes somewhere else. You can't appreciate the highs without the lows. So for me right now, yeah, I really haven't gotten a chance yet to to do what I think I can do, but it's coming. And once it does, you know. I'll take that platform and I'll be out and I'll take off. Ah, thank you guys so much. Ray, thank you. Man. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you too, guys. Thanks, bro. Muted. Good morning, to both of you. David Dunn from the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer here. Uh, my question is for Ellie. Ellie, uh, you and I are of a similar age, and it feels like when I was growing up, there was sort of a lot of negative stereotypes around vegans. But um, as the times change, uh, there's a sort of a growing movement within the wrestling community, or I guess just within the general public, that you know, veganism's an uh, acceptable lifestyle now. Uh, what does it mean to you to be out there as a vegan, as a very public figure, and sort of be out there on a world stage representing veganism? Um, that's a great question. Good question. I like yeah, this question. Good question. <laughs> Um, well, veganism is something that uh, I'm very passionate about. Um, I uh, People ask me this all the time, like, are you vegan for the health benefits? Is it um, for animals? Is it for the environment? Um, for me, it was it was always for the animals. Um, uh, even as a, as a kid, I had a really hard time eating meat. I went vegetarian when I was 14. Um, and so to be able to... Um, use the small platform that I do have to um, promote a vegan lifestyle and a vegan diet is is really cool and it's it's neat because um, I have a lot of people that ask me questions about it like you know they're interested in it but they're not sure like how to start or or what to eat and all these things and it's it's really been cool for me to be able to um, talk to these people and give them advice and um, and and to actually see like I remember when I was 
Um, years ago, it, it was it was hard to find um, any kind of vegan uh, options. Even though I was a vegetarian, I would look for things like uh, alternatives to, to mayonnaise and cheese and things like that. And, and the, the options that were available were awful. So um, to see how much the movement has grown and it's become a lot more mainstream now, it's it is pretty exciting, and I think more and more people will start to turn to the plant-based lifestyle. At least I hope so. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, Haley, I guess Haley, we should have a little follow-up question on the uh, the vegan front. Uh, clearly, this past uh, time in Orlando, we had a, uh, a newcomer who certainly speaks mm -hmm. very highly on that uh, vegan world and... Um, you got to, I believe, went, go to a brunch with him, or a, a breakfast. I, I apologize, I don't remember which one it was, breakfast or brunch. Yeah, it was a brunch, <laughs> it was a brunch. it was so cool because, like, I have, I mean, me and, and Aries have been, like, social media friends, but I've never met him really, we never really talked, and uh, we were, like, two peas in a pod. We were just chatting all about the vegan lifestyle and vegan options and the food we like. It was awesome. It was great, and the food at this place was Oh my gosh, it was amazing. It was so good. We had chicken and waffles and biscuits and gravy. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Now, Kimmer, did you say, like, yeah, did they have, like, healthy stuff, or did you guys just eat kind of, like, like you said, like, gravy and waffles? and? Yeah, yeah it was, yes, it was a little bit unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> but delicious. We were, both, we were both laughing and joking about it because we were trying to not eat all of it because we both knew we had to wear spandex. So we were like, oh, let's just take little bites. <laughs> Well, media, as long as we do mention uh, Austin Aries, I will give you the, uh, the scoop now. Next Thursday, right here on the Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference, Austin Aries, next Thursday. Uh, that will be at 2 o'clock Eastern Time next Thursday. Good stuff. Hey, guys, it's Jeremy Bennett with Sports Kita. Uh, Hi. This is, this is for both you guys. Um, Cool. Mixed tag teams are becoming increasingly popular all over pro wrestling. We've got the Mixed Match Challenge. You had the, the rise of Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae. Would you guys like to see Impact Wrestling have more mixed tag matches where you guys can team up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, again, I, I refer back to the indies only because I don't know who knew us on the indies and who didn't, but... Um, uh, BS and I uh, were a team on the Indies. Not so much wrestling, I usually managed him, but we did have the opportunity to have some mixed intergender matches. And um, I would love to share a ring with, with BS. That would be an impact. I think that would be so much fun. And uh, we have good chemistry, like just natural chemistry. So I think it would be a lot of fun to kind of explore that dynamic more in impact. Yeah, it's like, I mean, inter intergender wrestling definitely has something like something special to offer you know what i mean and, and there's mm -hmm. definitely like you said i mean like with it growing there's definitely a market for it now because you know they, there's there's been so much attention on it because it's you know like a lot of things like as long as long as it's as, as long as it's done right it's awesome it's something different mm -hmm. it's just it's super cool to watch thanks guys thank, yeah, you. thank you so do we ask each of you to name somebody who you would team with if it wasn't the other one um, oh my god well since we're talking about aries i feel like me and aries would right. protecting we'd be like the vegan the vegans taking over bro so you're trying to ruin valentine's day <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing well, come on you, you said you're basically gonna do I'm nothing like, for valentine's day so i'm I trying mean, to I don't you know <laughs> sorry Beyonce, just it threw you right over you the bus throw, there. Throw the toilet. <laughs> come on, man. you're gonna ruin the rest of my day here <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that one open-ended, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that could get you just as much in the doghouse as, as anything, and I'll keep going. And <laughs> make sure you stay out of it. <laughs> Hi there. This is BQ from the Impact Lounge. My uh, question is for Braxton. But first, I want to say to Allie, someone passed me a veggie and hummus plate at dinner last night, and I, I couldn't mm -hmm. pull the trigger, but maybe next time I'll give it a shot. But, uh. Oh, <laughs> couldn't pull the trigger this time. And veggies. That's, that's <laughs> delish. Next time, I'm going to try it. Next time I will do it. Um, all right. So my question is for Braxton. First of all, I want to say I'm a very yeah. avid listener of uh, Kicking Ass with Jesse and Andy. I think it's oh, really awesome yeah, to hear your, your personality shine when we don't, we're not always privileged to get that on television necessarily. So Thanks, it's kind of a two-part. Um, 
how did the idea of the podcast come about? Because it's wrestling centric, but not about wrestling necessarily. And will we ever yeah. hear Allie on it again? That was my favorite episode. I think she even cursed on it. Free, free, wild stuff, huh? Um, uh, sorry, there's a couple questions in there. Um, first, yeah, I, I was actually just thinking about having Allie on again. I was thinking about it today. We'll probably, we'll probably have her on again soon. The, uh, the idea for it came about because my co-host, Andy Williams is, I've, uh, basically, I went to high school with a, a hardcore band, Every Time I Die, who, like, in Buffalo, I've been, you know, I've been wrestling for 20 years, and they've been touring, uh, they're from Buffalo, and they've been touring the world doing music for 20 years. So, Andy, Andy, I knew through those guys, he's been playing guitar, he's a big wrestling fan, so the idea was for us, we do, us doing the podcast, it's like, it's the combination of, you know, it's not just a wrestling podcast, um, with us, you know, me being in wrestling, him being a fan, and now Andy's getting, Andy's getting into wrestling too, but we talk a lot of wrestling, and then we, basically the travels of wrestling, and the travels of music. We talk a lot about music bring, too. Yeah, we bring, we bring, we bring those two worlds together, because I, I always, mm -hmm. I always like to say, like, any form of entertainment, like, wrestling, music, comedy, acting, a lot of it is like the same path and a lot of it is very similar. So I, I enjoy talking about all those different aspects. So we try we try to bring all that stuff together. Yeah, and, and we both have eccentric personalities which I think come out too. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Hi. And have... Uh I know you guys said you didn't have too uh, too many extravagant plans for this Valentine's Day, but uh, have you guys done anything anything extravagant in any past Valentine's days? <laughs> oh my God, I feel like this is going to make us sound like the worst, most boring couple <laughs> the most, on the, the most planet. Boring, the most like, boring people. I'm we're the most three. boring people. No, 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 no. It's okay. <clears throat> for real. One of our favorite things to do is watch horror movies. It's the one genre of film that we both agree on. So usually, like, anytime we have a chance to be home together, which is not all that often. We're both traveling a lot. Um, so when we do get to spend time together, even whether it's Valentine's Day or not, uh, we usually watch horror movies, eat vegan pizza, and usually finish it off with, I get dairy-free Ben & Jerry's, he gets a regular Ben & Jerry's, and that is, like, the perfect night for us. So... If if this Valentine's Day could be that perfect, I would be a very happy girl. So we don't really that's, we don't really do anything too extravagant, you know. That's what, what, that's your, really, what, what is your favorite horror movie? What's your favorite uh, horror movie? We're oh big on we're big oh. on um, Woo, I guess this is a tough one. We're big on like uh, those like Netflix like hidden gems. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, kind of like yeah. the kind of like the the cheesy B B movies. No, not even like, like that. There's, there's actually no, like a lot like of good, there's like a lot of good stuff on there that never hit theaters. Like just like, like oh, you know, they have a whole bunch. Oh, okay. So kind yeah. of like the uh, kind of like the well done, just not popular or like widely known, but but really but good. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Like cult, like you know, cult cult classics, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and we also we um, like for Halloween we watched. We tried to watch horror movies every single day. It was tough because we were, again, always traveling. But um, we watched a lot of, like, uh, 80s horror movies, and those are always fun to watch, too. So, we like, I think we like every genre of horror, basically. What did we see? Yeah, we, we go, like, on, on Thursday nights, we go to a, a local theater in Buffalo that plays, like, older um, horror movies. And we watched, we saw Zombie. We saw, Zombie was amazing to see in theaters. Re I don't know if you yeah, guys have seen that. Reanimator, yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh, like they show the old cult classics, and it's like it's mm -hmm. like a growing yeah. community. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I grew up. I grew up. I was a kid in the '80s, so I love those. I love those '80s horrors. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, they're the best. There's can't something. Can't there's something, something weirdly. There's weirdly something so comforting about '80s horror. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe I'm just a weirdo, but there's just something comforting about watching horror movies from the '80s. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of brilliant directors back then. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they, they all went on to like do different stuff. Like we, uh, we mm -hmm. I remember the one we we, we, we watched uh, Halloween Four. How, Halloween Four is amazing. <laughs> it's super, it's super. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank, no, you. thank you. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. 
I'm so happy to see the evolution of the Alley character and uh, you being able to show everybody now what you can do in the ring. Um, and someone in mentioned uh, mixed tag matches, and not maybe necessarily those, but how much does the, now the change and, and that you've kind of opened up things and, and you're able to do more in the ring, um, how much does that open up to new scenarios for you and especially working with your husband? Yeah. Um, it. Oh, my gosh. It, it's been very – I feel like I say this a lot. Um, because I've had a lot of people ask me how I feel about Ali, especially when I first came in. Um, a lot of people, I think, especially people that followed me on Indies, were very um, irked that I was tripping over my own feet and <laughs> getting in the ring and stuff like that. Um, but it has been really cool to, again, like, uh, be on this journey and, and to start sort of over again and then slowly become this wrestler. Um, it's, it's been kind of cool and, and a little bit humbling, too. Um, but now I feel like, now that, you know, I'm kind of, like, running with it, I, I feel like there's so many girls in the division that I would like to work with, um, Taya being one of them. Um, we had an opportunity to work together in Mexico for uh, Lucha World Cup, and uh, we were on the same team. But we never got to actually wrestle. So we've never really been in the ring together. Uh, so I feel like that would be really cool. Um, but I feel like there's just, there's so many more opportunities now, um, for me now that I'm actually wrestling and, uh, feuds that I would love to have in the division. Um, and I've talked about this before. I would love to see the tag titles come back for the girls. Um, I think that, you know, we have a really solid roster now and possibly with a couple more additions, we could actually have that, you know, um, come to life again. I think that would be really cool. So yeah, I just feel like there's so many more opportunities now that I'm, I'm able to get in there and, uh, you know. Do my thing. <laughs> so we're going to see some glimpses of the old cherry bomb in 2018. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to ask, a your request has been received. Uh, the writer asked that I do not mention his name, his media okay. outlet, or even the country he lives in. Um, uh, very secretive. <laughs> Well, I, I think I understand when you when you hear the first part of his question, you'll understand why. Um, <laughs> Ellie, it's been great here listening to you today. However, all I want right now is a big, fat, greasy, juicy cheeseburger. Ew. Uh, <laughs> that, then he continues. Uh, that said, I'll at least ask a question that you can both answer. What are your thoughts about the Super Bowl on... Okay. This guy's all over the map. <laughs> yeah. Okay, first of all, uh, un unnamed, unknown person that wants a big, greasy cheeseburger. There are, believe it or not, options out there that taste very similar to real beef burgers. One of them is the Beyond Burger, which is now available at TGI Fridays. No, I don't work for TGI Fridays, but I was just really excited to hear that they were released. So I encourage you to just try it. You don't have to love it, but just try it and then get back to me. Okay, the Super Bowl. Straight up, guys, I don't watch sports. I don't really like them very much. <laughs> so this probably is a better question for BS. <laughs> uh, I'm not like I'm not a huge football guy. Uh, being from Buffalo, like I'm a Bills fan, and that's about it. So once once the Bills are out, I don't really follow that much. Uh, I feel like this answer is probably going to catch me a lot of heat, but it's tough. Like I like. Um, like, I like the story of the city of Philadelphia. Like, they're so passionate about everything. I, it would be really cool to see them pull it off. But at the same time, here's where the problem lies, is, like, I really like Tom Brady. Um, I, I, like, I enjoy greatness, and I think we're watching greatness right now. He's literally, I mean, he's hands down one of the best football players of all time. And I, I, don't, I just like his work ethic, and I, I like following the guy. So, it's, to me, like, if the Patriots pull it off, I think it'd be pretty sweet. Hey, afternoon, guys. It's Alan Wu from the sportscourier.com. I have a general question for both of you guys about um, the state of the business because this has been one of the colder winters on record. Is that uh, is that creating a kind of a burden? Is it a little bit harder for everyone to, uh, if not stay in shape, but to perform because it's been colder than it usually been for the last few years? Uh, if anything, um, like maybe the only thing that affects is like travel. You know what I mean? It's a little yeah. harder to get yeah. around when like the weather's yeah. garbage. Yeah, that's true. I got hit with that awful flu uh, that's going oh, around. Yeah. Uh, it was like the last day of taping, and I woke up with a with a fever and the chills, and it was awful. And then we had to 
fly home the next day, but our flight was like, we missed our flight and it was, oh my God, I sat in the airport for, I think we were there for like five or six hours with the flu. It mm-hmm. was awful. Um, so yeah, I guess the weather has <laughs> part, part to blame for that. But um, yeah. And in terms of like staying in shape, I don't know. I'm like a, I'm like a fitness addict. So it doesn't matter what the weather's like or how cold it is. I just go to the gym because <laughs> I have to wear spandex, you know? <laughs> I guess it's, yeah, I guess that's a good point. I didn't really think of it that way, but yeah, I mean, with Ali just coming down with the flu, uh, the last day impact tapings, and then even in this area, I just I just did a show in Canada this past mm. weekend, and, and two two guys on the show were performing with the flu. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it, you're I feel right. like everybody yeah, right. has it that. Does, awful. Yeah, it does kind of make it harder on people. Thank you. Stay safe, you guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Interesting question about the uh, cold weather. I never really thought about that, but there were certainly several people, myself included, who were uh, coughing and not really uh, mm-hmm. the enjoying the weather in, in Orlando when we were just down there. Even exactly. Florida. It was cold. I was down there for New Year's Eve, and I, I went to Disney with Rosemary, and we were freezing. It was so cold. It was like in the 40s. I, you know, I did hear in uh, in Orlando from from Josh. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give him blame because I actually didn't like it. There's a, uh, I think it's Starbucks called a medicine ball. That's mm, oh yeah, yeah. I just put I just put it over to somebody yesterday. <laughs> oh, see, I thought it was horrible. He loves it. I really? It horrible. Yeah. It's a lifesaver, man. Uh, I just didn't do it. I get it without honey, and I think it's pretty good. <laughs> did you get the Did you get the mint in there? I, I got everything. I think I threw about ninety five percent of it out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bummer. No, it didn't do it for me. <laughs> Got <Gotcha. laughs> Maybe that's why I was sick for 10 days. You may now ask your question. <laughs> hey, guys. Big Ray from OneWrestling.com again. Uh, Braxton, really yeah. quickly, before I ask my question, I think only you, New England, and probably Peter Griffin are the only ones rooting for Tom Brady. i got to be honest with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> But uh, listen, <laughs> but listen, guys. Um, you know, I, I work really closely with this gentleman by the name of Ben Hameen. You might know who he is, and uh, I know you guys did a lot of time in Two CW and and on the Indies together. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, like, you know, tell us about how you guys met and you know how you guys kind of fell in love and and working together on the Indies and and how that affected your relationship and brought you guys closer. Oh, um, story. Yeah, yeah. Sure. so we we met uh, at a company called PWX in Muted. I want to say it was St. Thomas, Ontario. St. Thomas. Yeah, and that was I want to say 2008, right? Around 2008. Yeah. Um, right but we were both like, you know, we were both like, you know, doing our own thing, and it wasn't until like 2012 that we sort of were both available and like yeah, we, we hung we out. We knew each other. And, yeah, we had known each other for years, and we ended up, like, talking for, like, two or three hours about horror movies and music, and it was like, you ever see, like, Step Brothers when they're like, we just become best friends? Yep. It was sort of like that. Like, it was just like, <laughs> am I wrong, or am I telling a weird story? No, no, yeah, we, like, we, we knew each other for about four years before we ever actually got together, and then... Uh, yeah. Like, it's, and for us, I always feel like it's the exact opposite. Like, you know, a lot of times you hear the story of just, you know, it's so hard. Like, you travel so much and you're apart yeah, from each no. other. And, like, for yeah. us, it's the exact opposite. Like, that's, yeah. like, I don't know. For me, it was always being with somebody who wasn't in the wrestling business. It was tough. And then, like, now with me and Allie together, like, because we we're passionate about the same thing. We're doing, you know what I mean? Like, she understands what I'm going through. I understand what she's going through. And, you know, now if we do travel, we, that, that way we get to appreciate the time that we're together more. And, you know, we understand mm-hmm. what each other are talking about when we're, 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 you know, when we're talking about what we do. And, you know, say then, you know, we have such passion for fitness and, you know, we go to the same gym and it's like we do everything. So it, it all works. Mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't imagine being yeah. with somebody who didn't have, who didn't have the same passions as I did. Yeah. And even like working together, like one of the things that we were a little bit weird about was like actually being... Um, like working together like uh, in the ring you know yeah. um, we tried to keep that separate for a while and it, it, it just so happened that we got thrown together for something and we realized like right away that we had chemistry and 
Um, you know, and then we had the opportunity to work for CZW for, I think we were there for about four years and, um, everything sort of started moving for us once we got together and worked together and encouraged each other and, and, um, you know, he brings a side of me out that I didn't have and I bring a side of him out that he may not, he might not have realized he had. And I, I feel like that dynamic has really helped us both. Um, so much professionally as long, you know, together with obviously building a healthy relationship, but, um, we're just a team. Like we're a solid team. I, I consider him my best friend and, um, I like to think he thinks of me as his. maybe I come second to Andy. I don't know. <laughs> I, always, but, um, that's funny. I, I always forget about that. Like when we first got together, that was like graved in my brain was cause I, I had never been with anybody in wrestling before. And when me and her got together, it was, uh, and I was like, we're not, she, you know, we're not going to work together. You know what I mean? She's not going to mm-hmm. valet me. We're not going to wrestle each other. Like, I don't want to do any of that stuff. And I was like, I wanted to avoid it. And then it's like, yeah, it just the, someone put us in like a faction together in Toronto and it went really well. And then, uh, we got this, you know, and then the CZW stuff started where we did a together and it was, and, not, and then, you know, to fast forward. And then from now, that, I went to house of hardcore too. Like we had an opportunity to, yeah to work together in House of Hardcore and, and work against uh, or work with uh, Tommy Dreamer and Mickey James. Like, that was huge for us, you know? Um, now, now, it's, now it's the exact where it's like if I have to wrestle, like, just by myself, I'm like, oh, it's just me? Like, I can't come out of the alley or nothing? I get, like, bummed out. <laughs> like, it's, like, yeah, it's, like yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is uh, Hannibal from The Hannibal TV, and I have a question for Ali. Um, you're from Toronto, and there was some talk of the next set of impact tapings being in Toronto in the spring. Um, do you know if that's still in the plans, and would you like to wrestle for impact in Toronto? I mean, I certainly hope so. Um, at this point, I I heard the same thing. I haven't heard like concrete confirmation on that, um, but. Would I like to wrestle in Toronto? Of course. Like, it's my, it's my city. I get so excited every time I get to go home. Actually, I find any reason to go to Toronto, like, at all. If somebody asks me, like, oh, can you come do this? I'm like, is it in Toronto? Yep, I'll be there. Um, so I, I absolutely love going home. And uh, for to be able to wrestle for impact uh, in my hometown would be such a cool experience. I have so many, like, of my friends and family that wanted to go out to Ottawa, but they, you know, weren't able. They weren't able to make it. So, um, to be able to do it in Toronto and have my friends and family and, and everybody come watch would be so, 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 so cool. So I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed that it happens in April. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you from experience. Like she, she was like ecstatic to wrestle at a pay per view bound for glory in Ottawa. Just you know. In Canada in general, she got Canadian gear made and it was like a big, it was like a, a, a big, that you know, was a big opportunity for her. So now like if she could actually do it in like her home city of Toronto, like it, it, yeah, it, 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 it'll be really, really cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be a little bit weepy, I think. Just a smidge. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for both uh, Ali and Braxton. This is Sean Rossap of Fightful.com. You both had established names and personalities for, for years before this. What was it like making the transition to having completely new names and identities with Impact Wrestling? Um, I will be honest. It was difficult. <laughs> it, was, um, it was a challenge because um, there are parts of the character of Cherry Bomb that I really identified with. And, I mean, I've been wrestling now for, gosh, 13, almost 14 years. And Cherry Bomb has been my name since I started, since I was 18. So um, to have that identity for such a long time and then to walk into a new company and have that identity sort of taken away and been given something else was difficult. It was hard. Um, But... I learned very quickly um, that this was an opportunity for me to explore um, myself as a performer, um, as a talent. I was able to sort of, you know, it's it's not every day that you're handed a new slate and um, and have to perform a different way and then have a long story and then have a payoff. 
Um, so I've been like really blessed and fortunate to have that story with Maria and, and all those things. But initially, it was really, really hard to let go of, of Cherry Bob. I mean, she's still in my heart. She's still there. <laughs> but it was definitely, it was a challenge at first, for sure. I kind of like, uh, well, we, we always we always joke that like everybody in wrestling has three names. You have your, you have your real <laughs> name, you have your name from the indies, and then you have your TV name. So it, it's like, you know, they all kind of get like mishmashed. And then sometimes there's four because then sometimes people have like a nickname too. But like, I don't know, for me, it wasn't that bad because luckily for me, it's like I didn't, it wasn't really much of like a gimmick change. You know, it's like I was, I was Pepper Parks on the Indies and then they changed it to Braxton Sutter. You know, it's, it's not like I went from a gimmick of being a postman and then I went to a gimmick <laughs> of now I, um, uh, I don't know. No, I was in like a tag team, and we I don't know work construction or something. I don't, like it wasn't it wasn't like you know it wasn't like a big drastic change. So like you know the the, uh, the like the name thing. I just kind of you know I I kind of uh, you embraced I it. I think right off the yeah. Heart. I, that's what I'm looking for. I embraced it and like yeah. I appreciated it because I I had been Pepper Parks for so long, and I'd been fighting and fighting and fighting for 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 a job and for a contract and for an opportunity on television. And when I got it, I was like, you know, it was, just, it was like, it was like a badge of honor or something like that. It's like, Oh, you know, now my name is Braxton mm -hmm. Sutter and I'm going to make this work. And you know, I was, if anything, I was, I was actually really excited about it. To follow up with, with Ali, are you going to, or have you integrated aspects of that cherry bomb character that you identified with, uh, presently into your character as Ali on impact? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially now that I'm I'm wrestling a lot more and I'm able to sort of do more in the ring. Um, absolutely. I mean, the aggressive, like, for anybody that, you know, followed me on the indies, uh, Cherry Bomb, <laughs> I was a little more aggressive and a little bit nastier. <laughs> um, but it's been fun to sort of uh, add in that aggression in my matches um, that I wasn't able to do before. I, and I think I think the character of Cherry Bomb was a lot more confident than Allie. Um, and it's been fun to sort of play with uh, Allie developing into having more confidence and having that little Cherry Bomb streak in her. So hopefully I'll, I'll be able to show a little bit more of that, that side eventually. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Ali and Braxton. It's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you guys? Hello. Good. Good. How are you? Going? Good. So I got one question for each of you. I'll ask it, and then you guys can uh, jump in. Ali, um, you know, your presentation from the point you came to Impact, as you mentioned, was completely different from Cherry Bomb. Talk a little bit about what it was like working on the vignettes and, and finding the, the voice of the character uh, as you kind of reboot yourself. And Braxton, you were originally trained by Les Thatcher, so I'm sure you have a million and one great stories about what it was like uh, with Les breaking you down and telling you everything that you did is wrong and how to fix it. So I just wanted to uh, ask, those, <laughs> ask those of each of you. Okay. Uh, do you want me to go first, B.S.? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so this is a fun, uh, this is a great question, by the way. Love it. Um, so, Allie. Okay, so when I, when I first came in, and they sort of told me, uh, like, this is what you're going to be doing. Um, the first couple of vignettes, so the first couple of pre-tapes that we did, I was probably more nervous than I've ever been in my entire life. Like, I felt so out of my element. I didn't know how to identify with the character. I didn't know, like, how to present her um, as authentic and, and um, convincing, like there was a lot of the. Uh, it was it was hard, especially coming from the indies where we do pre tapes and you know interviews and stuff like that. But um, this was such a completely different character from what I had done for so long. So it was challenging at first, but um, thankfully, you know, I, I got to work a lot with Dave Lagana, and um, he really believed in the character, and he trusted me with this this person that um, he believed so much in and you know he encouraged me to watch different things I mean I watched a lot of different comedians um, different TV shows uh, to try to like um, I don't want to say steal things from them but just to sort of get like better mannerisms and the tone of my voice down and how I enunciate things like it took a lot of work and a lot of like research to get Ali um, 
sort of the way that I wanted her and then, you know, the way that Lagana wanted her too and then sort of integrating that together. Um, so it was, it was, it was challenging. It was hard, but I, I feel like I say this all the time. I learned so much doing all of that. Um, I learned so much about developing a character and being confident in a character that I didn't have before Impact. And it actually, like, sparked something in me where I, I realized I actually really loved love doing the acting side of it um, that I didn't really get to do before. And um, it sort of got, it, even now, I get really excited every single time we do a pre-tape because I feel like it gives me an opportunity to grow the character and, and work on my own acting abilities too. So, um, sorry, that was a really long-winded answer, but uh, it's, been a, it's been a challenging process, but it's been a fun process too. Do you want to answer, B.S.? Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, like I always say, I'm really, really happy. I trained with Les cause that's Les is very, very good with teaching people from the ground up as far as like basics. And that's where I think that's a lot of the problem is today is a lot of people, they don't, they don't learn the basics first and they kind of jump ahead. They learn to run before they learn to crawl. Um, but yeah, Les, Les has like a very, he has a very old school mentality where, yeah, you're getting, you know, you're going to hear, let's say 99% bad stuff and maybe 1% good stuff if you're lucky. Um, but his, you know, his whole, his whole mentality behind that is because that's, that's how you get better. And you know what I mean? If you, if you develop an ego and you think you're doing all like, cause nobody, nobody is good at wrestling when you first start, especially, you know, I mean, even if you do catch on pretty well, everybody's terrible, at least for the first couple of years. So you know, if you if you start getting a big head on yourself and you think you're catching on quick, you're doing great. You're, you're not you're not going to get better. So Les, yeah, <laughs> you know, Les definitely enjoys running you into the ground every every chance he gets. But like uh, like I said, it, it's just that's that's his way that's his way of going about things. Like I, I can remember, um, he was at this point we had like two separate classes, and he was talking to the class of like newer students. And he was just kind of running down and, you know, telling them how they can't be lazy. And the, one of the examples was he was saying, you know, it, you're not going to good at, you're not going to get good at this through osmosis. You know what I mean? You can't hang out next to Jamie Noble and learn how to work. And then he said, and he said something along the lines of like, you know, you can't, you can't be around Pepper and get his abs. But the thing was, I, I wasn't there when he said that he would never say that to my face. He would, <laughs> he would never, I never, you know, when, I, when somebody told me he said that, I was like, oh, wow, really? Like, that's, that's awesome. I didn't, but he would like, that's just the way he worked. He would never, you know, he would never say that to your face. It was, you know, but then like I guess that, that's, this isn't a knock on less because it's actually really, it's, it's actually a really good way to train people is, you know, if you come back, if you come back from a match, you know, you're going to get better. But, you know, if someone just tells you about all the good stuff, no, you need to hear about the bad stuff so you can fix that. So that's that's just kind of how less less is the old school mentality works. And if I can just like interject something really quickly, and this isn't even you didn't ask me this, but I'm just going to tell you. So one <laughs> of the things that 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 really really impresses me, and that I didn't even realize um, about Jess, I'm sorry, BS, is how phenomenal he is as a teacher. Um, he trains. Uh, sorry, I'm going to talk about you for a second, BS, but. He okay. trains uh, Wednesday nights in Buffalo uh, at a ring here at Grapplers Anonymous, and he has how many guys? Fifteen, maybe, maybe about fifteen usually guys. Have, would you say? Uh, Wednesdays we usually have about fifteen, sixteen guys. F fifteen, sixteen guys. I watch him train these guys, and he's so good and patient. And I mean, it's a side of him that I didn't even know he had, and I feel like. Um, he learned a lot of, of how to train somebody so well through Les. I think training with Les taught him, like he said, so much from the ground up that I watch him teach these students. And they all come from, like, different backgrounds. They've all, either some of them are more experienced, some of them are brand new. And just to watch him train them has been really, really exciting. And they and now they, they go with him to shows and they all hop in a van. And and just watching him mentor these, these kids is um, probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen personally. <laughs> hey, thanks, Boo. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. It's uh, Dan here from TWS Radio in the UK. Um, as Hi. we've had so much talk 
Hi. As we've had so much talk tonight about food, we thought we'd ask you the question, which is just running wild at the UK at the moment. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh, heck yes. Yes. Is that, is that, is that yes. a new thing in the UK? We've been spearheading it for a while now. We've even got a hashtag, hashtag Pineapplegate, and it has split <laughs> so many people. What? That was Pineapple my, my is first... so good on pizza. It's bomb. I worked at, uh, before I moved to wrestling school, this is in like 1998 to 1999, I delivered pizzas for a place called <laughs> Just Pizza, and they had over they had over 50 kinds of pizza, and they had Hawaiian pizza, which has like cherries and pineapples and walnuts, and it's 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 awesome. <laughs> it's it tastes like, I always say it tastes like candy pizza. It's super good. So do you vote so yes you'd be a yes pineapple then. on pizza? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a big yes. Yep, yes for me. You are in the minority, <laughs> currently. Really? I feel like maybe they haven't, they haven't tried it. They haven't tried the vegan version, that's why. Yeah, a lot of people hear it. I like, tell you, um, your new pack president, uh, Don, uh, sorry, Ed Nordholm, is a no, so you may want to consider that. Really? Oh, oh. really? Talk, Ed? I'll, Come I'll talk, on. I'll talk to Ed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask him about that. Do, do we get Thank a you, guys. Hey, did, before you hang up, did you get a report on Scott and Don? Well, they were over in the UK. Are they? Yeah. They should know on pizza, a pineapple. Scott's a no. Uh, Don's a yes. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah, Don knows what's up. Yeah, this is going to be a good combo. <laughs> no, good. I'll throw Scott under the bus as well. Did you ask him about uh, red velvet pancakes with extra frosting? I will add Make sure you ask him about that when you talk to him. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Hey, this is DQ from the Impact Lounge again. My question is for the both of you, and it's regarding the wedding angle from last year. Um, very successful angle that eventually came to a culmination, but with KM and Congo Kong at the pre-show at time 15. Was there any frustration on your part that perhaps you didn't get the payoff you were building towards with Mike and Maria leaving the company? It seemed like the Allie and Braxton characters were going to take that next step, and then a wrench was kind of thrown in it. You guys were off TV for a little bit. Was there any frustration with that? Yeah, um, I mean, like, it, we both of us always say that, I mean, that wedding, like, real, like a real quick backstory on it, was that was that was one of the longest loops we ever did. We, we filmed at Universal in Orlando for it was either like eight or nine days that loop so it was real long and the uh, the wedding was the very last thing that happened on the very last day so you know obviously the crew the crew was like pretty tired and we had we'd all been building up to this moment and then when we filmed the wedding that was the biggest that was the biggest crowd that they'd drawn all week like because they you know they had they they took the ropes down and they had a whole setup and they even told us that, like, employees at Universal had heard they were doing a wrestling wedding. So, like, like employees were in there, like, just watching. And I know, like, me and Ellie both, like, for me, that's at least, at least, like, a top three moment of my wrestling career ever. Like, it was, you know, because there was, we had, it, it, you know, there was such build up to it, and it came off so well. We were both so happy about it. And then, yeah, I, you know, obviously, uh, you know, that was the end of the loop. And then by the time we came back, uh, Mike and Maria had left, and then it was a new it was a new creative team, so things went in like a different direction. Which you know, obviously, yeah, we wish we had gotten to do more with Mike and Maria, and you know, things would have went in a different way. But it's I don't know. I'm just I'm just really I was really happy with the way the wedding came off. Really, really proud of it. I think um, I think what what you know I'm just going to touch on this for a second, like. It was so loud. I mean, we could barely even get our lines out. The crowd was, it was crazy. just on fire, and every single person in that segment just killed it. Like, I couldn't look at certain people because if I did, I knew I was going to crack because everybody was just hilarious. And and um, I, I, I always go back to this. Like, Madison Rain is the one that wrote that segment. And I, I feel like she doesn't get the credit she deserves for it because she wrote an amazing segment. And she really trusted all of us to sort of, you know, bring this uh, piece of writing to life. And we were all so proud of it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, sure, I, I wish we could have 
you know, maybe had that mixed tag match or, or maybe had, I could have had a one-on-one -on -one with Maria. But one of the cool things about wrestling is, um, like, even if it doesn't happen now, I, I wouldn't doubt that it might happen down the road. You know, a lot of things in wrestling come full circle, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if at one time we're, we're all in the same, you know, ring together, company together, and, and get to tell that story again um, or pick it up where we left off. Uh, so, yeah, in some respects, like, that's yeah, kind of disappointing that, you know, the wedding was just such a big moment for everybody, and then it, it didn't feel like the end of the chapter truthfully. Um, I feel like the book is still open and hopefully one day we can finish telling that story. Yeah, I mean, for, for us, you know, we, we did all we could. But, you know, the stuff that we were in control of, we knocked it out of mm -hmm. the park. The stuff afterwards, we're just, we're not in control of that. And it's, you know, we nailed it. The whole thing's available on YouTube. It'll, you know what I mean? It'll be there forever. So it was, yeah, that, that was, it was a really cool moment for like both of our careers. Thank you. Hey guys, Jeremy Bennett with Sports Kita, and uh, this question is for Allie. <clears throat> uh, being a vegan, are there any challenges in terms of uh, training as a pro wrestler? Um, truthfully, not really. It, it was it was tough at first. Um, not so much the training, but more so of like the traveling and getting used to um, sort of what my options were, what I could eat, and what had like there is milk and eggs and so many things like things you wouldn't even things you wouldn't even like think have them have dairy or some form of animal byproduct in them so that was a bit challenging but the actual training um i was pretty lucky to uh find a coach uh his name is mark williams and i've worked with him for the last gosh it's been i think a year and a half um i remember it was after one of the loops um and I was feeling really run down and tired and um, and I I was sore and I just kind of felt like I didn't really know what direction to go in in terms of like fitness and I reached out to him and we started training and he, he upped all of my uh, my protein and my carbs and um, he has pushed me through workouts that I couldn't even imagine pushing myself through um, and I've trained kickboxing with him now and uh, he he really changed my life in terms of like um, like my fitness and goals and things like that. Um, so it was a transition for me being a vegan and being an athlete and all of those things combined. Um, but I with think his the, help, I think the biggest I was, thing was Mark got you to uh, he got you to eat more. Yeah, he got me to eat more. That was that was a problem for me. I just wasn't eating enough, um, and he was like, "You need to eat a lot more than you're eating." And once I once I did that, I noticed. Um, a huge change in my body. So it's, it wasn't so much as the vegan part. I think it was more of just like um, how, to, how to fuel my body for the activities that I was putting it through, if that makes sense. I, I, I didn't want, want to say this. Oh, I go ahead. I say this earlier. Yeah, like, uh, like a different side of the spectrum, I guess, from like the, uh, the I don't know, the meathead bodybuilder perspective. But like, <laughs> it's, I mean, time, times are like, I, like I always say, like we, we live in amazing times right now, and like even for traveling, I mean, even as far as like healthy eating, like things have gotten so much better, and it's it's cool, you know, it's you know I'm not vegan, but it's it's cool to see for her more vegan options now, and then even for us, like you know, to see more Chipotle's at airports instead of McDonald's, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. just like, there's there's a lot there's a lot more like health like eating healthy on the road is way easier now than it was ten years ago, and you can see it growing and growing and growing. So like. It's it's just it's it's really cool. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed, uh, uh, especially in, I live in Nebraska, and uh, a lot of there's a lot of places now. Like there's a place called Eat Fit Go. So basically, it's they That's put great. together. Yeah, they put together like a, a a healthy package for you to be able to eat on the run. Um, one quick That's follow great. up, Al. Uh, one quick yeah. follow up, Al. You uh, uh you started wrestling in 2005. Um, I didn't. I don't know if you, if, if I caught that earlier or not. I know you said you were, uh, became vegetarian when you were 14. Uh, what point did you become vegan? Um, so I actually started training in 2004, believe it okay. or not, which feels like an eternity. I can't believe how long it's been. But anyways, um, so, sorry, what was the question? When did I become vegan? Yeah, was it uh, yeah. in the middle of your wrestling career? or? 
Uh, no. So I, so yeah, so I went vegetarian when I was 14. Um, and then I started going vegan around 2014. So okay. I, yeah, so it was a slow process for me. Um, I tried to do like, I tried to cut it all out at once and it, it was just, it was, it was challenging. So then rather than doing that, I just slowly started eliminating things. Um, which I highly recommend for anybody that's considering going vegan um, is to take it slow. And, um, you know, it's not about being perfect. It's not about being the perfect vegan. It's about making healthy choices and making the choices um, that you want for your body. Um, so, yeah, it was around 2014 I started cutting things out. And then, um, and yeah, and honestly, I haven't looked back and I haven't felt better. Like, I think the a lot of people will say this once they go vegan, like my skin, my hair, my nails, like my body, like it just feels so, so, so much better. Um, but I do, I do stress that it's really important to research, um, research, you know, the foods that you should be eating, learn how to cook them, learn how to get comfortable, you know, eating and cooking with tofu and seitan and tempeh and all those things. Cause it makes the transition so, so, so much easier once you actually have to know what you're doing and how to navigate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, this is BQ from the Impact Lounge again, sneaking back in. Um, there was a storyline <laughs> going on with uh, either of you can answer this. There was a story going on with you guys previous to, uh, I believe it's previous to Bound for Glory, that never ultimately materialized, and perhaps it had to do with the change of management. Could we see, I don't know if you're on Liberty, to speak about it, but could we see that storyline pick up again in the future or will it go a new direction? And basically what I'm alluding to is the uh, angle where Braxton was maybe showing some jealousy. Yeah. yeah well, that, uh, the, I mean, the BS is definitely going to be on episodes, upcoming episodes. Um, so I don't, we can't really give anything away, but I wouldn't say that it's dropped. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's the perfect way to put it. It's, yeah, it's, you know, the, the, the storyline was growing and it kind of dropped off, but it's, it's getting ready to pick back up here shortly. So, yeah, please, please check it out. Yeah, it was a lot of a, a lot of fun stuff coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, man. Hey, guys, Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com again. Before I get to my question, just based on this call today, I think Impact Coffee would be a great product for the company to introduce oh. and have you guys endorse it. Now uh, we're talking. A Allie, Allie's Coffee. Allie, what's a good name? Bunny, Bunny Power Coffee. Whew. Done. <laughs> I, uh, I, like, I just, I literally, as you said that, I just finished my Starbucks coffee. The only pro, it's, if we're going to make it, it's got to be strong, man, because, like, uh, mm -hmm. Starbucks is just like a cult, and I'm totally a part of it now. I have the apps, the whole thing, and I I, I can't I can't drink I can't drink anything else because it's a waste of time. It's like drinking iced tea, and I'm just still tired. So like, the best yeah, if he didn't make... drink coffee before we started dating. He never drank coffee, and I totally ruined him. I brought him not, over to the yeah, dark not, side. Not as much, but now it's <laughs> bad. So <laughs> yeah, if, if we're gonna make impact, BS and Ailey coffee, it's. It's better be dark. Taste it like better mud. be strong. It's, yeah, it's going to be taste like mud, and it's going to be real strong. I have that to ask you, question. <laughs> I, have I, have to, I have to ask you, Brian. Yeah, it's it fine. Is? It's the coffee. It's the co It's the caffeine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Braxton, it seems like now you're back and healthy and ready to roll for 2018, uh, and and it seems like you're also going to be in that main event uh, picture. Who are some of your targets there in Impact Wrestling this year, and how do you match up with them? Uh, that's, I mean, one thing you can always say about Impact is, like, uh, you know, for as long as they've been around, like, the the roster is always, like, top-notch. And uh, for me, I don't know why, the, the first one that always comes to mind is Eli Drake. Um, Eli trained at the same school I did. We didn't we didn't come up together, but he trained at the same school I did, and I, I was there his, his early years. And uh, I, I saw him turn into what he is today. And it's it's really it's really cool to see like him evolve and get as good and be as good as he is. And I, I always knew it's funny, me and a bunch of guys were talking, like when he first started with Impact, we were just like, Yeah, he'll be he'll be champion. He'll be champion of Impact and then when it happened, it was cool to say I called it. So I I really 
I'd really like to professionally wrestle Eli Drake. Uh, I'm a big fan of like Alberto Del Rio's work right now. Or I'm sorry, uh, Pat- uh, Patron's work. And so Patron would be another guy. And let me think. Um, EC3 is another. And I would say Eli, the, the, the top three that always come to mind, always EC3, um, Eli Drake, Patron, and then I'm going to add one more, Moose. I've never, I've never gotten to wrestle with Moose before, so those would be my top guys. Actually, before we move on to this uh, next uh, next caller, I, I do have to ask, um, you, you hit on the Starbucks. What about uh, Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> and let's ask, uh, Allie, and, uh, when we were up in Ottawa, and if, you know, if we ever go back to uh, Canada, what about Tim Hortons? Okay. Well, first of all, Duncan, that's why I feel about Duncan. <laughs> uh, okay, Tim Hortons. I used to love Timmy's. I was, uh, you know, I'm a proud Canadian girl, loved my Tim Hortons coffee. Uh, the Tim Hortons here in Buffalo is god awful. It's gross. It tastes very watered down. I don't know what they do to it, but it doesn't taste like Canadian Tim Hortons. Um, so for now, I'm firmly behind, and I hate to say this, Starbucks coffee. It, it, it disgusts me that I'm saying this, honestly. <laughs> get a uh, get a get a cold brew coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, and then get a cold brew coffee from Starbucks. It's like you can totally tell. Two yeah. compl- It's it's insane. And then yeah, like I, I feel bad saying this. She, I mean, she just said the same thing. But I, I mean, I was. I've been in Buffalo for like the growth of Tim Hortons. Like everyone was so excited when it first came down from Canada. I don't. I don't know if it's now. Maybe I'm getting a little deep here, but I don't. I don't know if it's like. A, I mean, now they're literally on every block. There's literally yeah, I mean, they're everywhere there's, and they're gross. There, there will there will be a Tim Hortons in a gas station, and then two blocks up the road, there's a separate Tim Hortons chain itself. And I, I like it's just I can't. We we drove up to Canada. The other day, and we didn't we didn't have time to stop at Starbucks, so we just got Tim Hortons. We filled up with gas. I drank the whole thing with a shot of espresso with it. We got to the, the, uh, Toronto, and I was exhausted, and I had to go get a Starbucks coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks, man. Can you, Ross? Can you tell we're very passionate about coffee? Yeah, but we're going to have a little disagreement here because uh, I'd probably go uh, Duncan and then uh, Timmy Hortons and then Starbucks. Wow. Are you? You know I, what? Though? I, mean, I, I will I, say this. I do want to say I, though, because I, I, I like we, we, I like supporting Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons in Canada is is not bad. Tim Tim Hortons in Canada. Yeah, it's better. Good. It's better. Yeah. Yes. That was one of the the treats of uh, in Ottawa. I, I had a Tim Hortons about uh, about a three minute walk away from the hotel. I was I was liking that. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hey guys, Jeremy Bennett again with Sports Kita. Uh, but first off, I just wanted to make a comment for Braxton. Uh, uh, I've been following you since the Pepper Park stays in ROH, and Thanks, man. I would, I would definitely love to see you and Eli Drake go at it in 2018. So I, I want to see that happen for sure. I appreciate that. Me too. Thank you. Uh, this is for both you guys. Uh, now that now that Impact has gone back to the four sided ring, uh, what are the differences for you guys competing in the four sided ring as opposed to the six sided ring? And are there things that you like better or not as much when it comes to, to working now again in a four-sided ring? Um, well, okay. So I obviously, uh, I prefer the four-sided ring myself. Um, I think a lot of us probably do. Um, but weirdly, like, because I was working in a six-sided ring for a while, it started feeling like almost normal so that when I started doing indie shows and it was a four-sided ring, it just felt weird because I was used to the six-sided. Um, but the the four-sided ring is, is definitely like, it's more comfortable to work in and anybody that's like climbed the ropes and got to the top in a six-sided ring will tell you it's the most awkward like you have to stand like a certain way or else you'll literally just fall off. And I, I didn't, I can't believe I'm even telling this story because it's so embarrassing. I didn't realize like how far away the, the ropes are from the turnbuckle. It's hard to explain this, but I got up to do a high cross body and I 
I'm so glad that I didn't fall, but I nearly fell off the top rope. Oh. Like, it was one of those moments in, like, a cartoon when someone's like, Whoa, and, like, they're about to <laughs> wipe out. <laughs> like, that's literally what happened. So, to say I'm happy that we have a four-sided ring back is an understatement. I'm I'm quite happy about that. Are your, yeah, uh, are, are your legs a little further apart on the six-sided ring? Is that kind of what the That's it. Is? Yes, yeah. yeah. You articulated that much better than what I just tried to explain. Yeah, <laughs> further apart. <laughs> They're further apart. So it's, it's just an awkward stand. I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah, and I've never been close to the top rope ever, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I don't want. I don't want to. Like, I mean, I think everybody is happy that the four sided ring is back. Um, I mean, I don't want to completely crap on the six sided ring. Like you know, it's not. It's it's not bad, and you don't. No, it's not bad. It's not as awkward as, yeah, it, as it might feel. Yeah, know. it's not. You know, you can. You you know, a lot of people get nervous about it. I mean, you can get in a six sided ring, and you know, you you pick it up pretty quick. It's it's not too. And bad. And it's big. But it's so big. Yeah, so, like, I don't know, the four-sided ring, it's just, I don't know, I feel like that's what pro wrestling is supposed to be in, and it's just so much more comfortable. And then, I mean, I think I've even heard AJ Styles say this, too. Like, it's just uh, the six-sided ring, I don't know if it's because of the more corners and it's being pulled tightly or something, but it's just a lot harder. Like, I remember when I... Oh, it's, uh, it's when literally first... like hitting cement. It's literally like hitting a cement floor. As, yeah, in, yeah, uh, run, be like, as, in, uh, as in running the ropes? No, like take like taking a bump. No, oh. no, a bump on the mat. It's like yeah. when I when we yeah. first started there. I remember like I took some falls, and I thought I was just kind of like out of shape. I was like, man, I'm really out of breath, <laughs> and like, like this is not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I was like, I, I got to get in a ring more often. So like that's when I started going more often to the ring here in Buffalo, and like the first time I went back after we got back from tapings, like I took a couple bumps, and I was like. Oh, this is fine. I was like, it's just the, it's just the ring is, the ring in Orlando it's, at Impact it's is just stiff. really stiff. Like, it's stiff. Yeah. Like, stiff, stiff, stiff. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, yeah. For the four-sided ring all around, it's just way more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, not many people, are, not many people learn pro wrestling in a, a six-sided ring. It, everybody learns it yeah. in a four-sided. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. It's just a comfort thing. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, right, thank, thank you. you. Hey, this is BQ with one more question, and my question is for Allie. We've had this conversation before about the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. Um, I've had a conversation with Sienna. She's in support of it, of it too. Now, I don't want to BS anyone, no pun intended. Um, I really want to see the titles back with Impact before that concept appears on another television show. Do you think there's any possibility we're going to see the uh, titles return? I mean, I've been pretty vocal about this. Uh, I would love to see them come back. Um, I love tag team wrestling. Uh, I tagged a lot on the indies, and I found that I had this like love for it that I didn't realize I had. Um, I think the dynamic of, of tag teams is just so much fun, and, and I feel like our roster is, um, like the knockout specifically, uh, we have a really solid roster. I think maybe if we got a couple more girls in there, we'd have enough to really have a solid tag team division. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the more people are vocal about it, maybe the more it'll inspire, uh, you know, them to come back. So, uh, fingers crossed, you know, I, I say never say never. I, I, I certainly hope they come back. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. One more time. <clears throat> um, you guys obviously are, have worked together for a while now. Do you see yourself as wrestling lifers? Do you think you'll work together as a couple in wrestling forever? Or is there going to be a point or a goal that you reach where you both say, okay, we're done, we're ready to go home now? Um, I mean, oh, for I me mean, personally... We plan, on, we plan on being married forever. So... <laughs> 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 well, I thought that was a given. Yeah, I'm talking about are you going to be yeah, ready yeah, for the yeah. wrestling business forever? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah we'll it's a married, given. I mean, all right, you're stuck with me. Okay, deal with it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like if, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm 37 now, and I feel I still feel pretty good. With, like as long, I mean, as long as I'm wrestling, and as long as I'm with her, like I'm pretty sure. 
that's going to be involved with what I'm doing. So for me, yeah, it, it'll probably be like a forever thing. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like I, I can only speak for myself personally in terms of how long I want to wrestle. Like, I love wrestling. I, I still get butterflies, and I get really, really excited for every match. I mean, if you're with me backstage, you know that I'm usually pacing around, and I get nervous every single time I go out. Um, and that feeling has stayed with me over the last, you know, 13 years. Um, if that feeling goes away and I'm, I'm just not feeling like I love it anymore or I'm feeling like it's time for the next chapter, then I'll make that decision based on how I feel. But right now, I still really love it. And I love it. Oh, my gosh. That's, sorry, that's yes. our dog, Hulk Hogan. Really sorry about that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I love working with my husband. Um, I love the dynamic that we have. So, yeah, absolutely. As long as I'm wrestling, I think, you know, in some capacity, we'll be working together. All righty, guys. I know I, I told you it'd be about 30 to 40 minutes, and we're going well, to drop over that. So thank you both very much. Uh, I, I will apologize to uh, uh, David down in Australia, uh, New Zealand. I apologize uh, on that, but I, I know it's uh, the middle of the night for you. But everybody else, if you're not going for lunch at this point or dinner or wherever you're at, <laughs> you, you're, you're never going to eat. I've, I've heard <laughs> more about food and, and, and coffee on this teleconference than anyone we've had. So. Uh, uh, it's Listen, Ross, I'm passionate. What, what did you passionate. promise me, Allie, that you're, you're making me a, a, a vegan meal? Is that, do I understand that? I will make you a... Listen, Ross, from the bottom of my, I'm telling you this the truth. I will make you a vegan pizza with maple syrup on the crust. And I, I swear you will try it and your whole life will change. You'll say, why have I been eating any other kind of pizza? Well, you know, I'm from Chicago, so we have, you know, that's deep dish pizza, that's you know, you, yeah, I live up to. This is on a whole other level, Ross. I promise you're gonna love it. All right. Well, we will open it up for a uh, a final thought from each of you. Ellie, uh, take us home. What your 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 final thought? Uh, well, first, I just want to thank everybody for calling in and asking some really fun questions that are different, out of the box. Um, as you guys can probably tell, I do love talking about food. <laughs> I love talking about veganism, coffee, uh, three of my favorite things, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, sort of, but, uh, no, I just want to thank everybody, um, for all of the outreach and support I've had over the last, you know, um, few weeks. People are, have been really excited about me wrestling more. Um, and I do just really quickly want to touch on something, um, that I posted about um, yesterday regarding mental health and mental health issues. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm pretty passionate about, and uh, I, d I just wanted to thank everybody for reaching out. And I posted something on Instagram about depression and anxiety and um, the amount of, of people that had commented and um, told their stories and then supported each other in the comment section was just so, so, so amazing, and I just want to keep encouraging people to talk openly about mental health issues, and let's just try to break that stigma that's surrounding them, because it doesn't need to be there. You know, we all go through stuff, so that's, that's my rant. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. B.S., with the final thought, take us home. Um, I was just going to say, this is, like, th this was my first one of these, and this was, this was really awesome. Like, I didn't know what to expect. It's Thursday afternoon at like, you know, we started at like one in the afternoon and I did not expect like one this many calls. Like, th like, like, uh, Ellie said, like, thank you for the out, out of the box questions. Like a lot of people called back numerous times. That was super cool. Like the whole, I mean, this whole thing, I can call from like New Zealand. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the, the comments on the podcast, kicking ass with Jesse and Andy. Like this, this, I mean, this was like a real, like I get bored very easily and I've been very bored lately. And this was like a really nice pick me up. This was very, thank you. I, I will tell you, BS. Though I think I'd rather go for a cheeseburger and fries with you, but I'll, I will have the, uh, the meal with that. <laughs> I, I committed Ross, to it. Wait till I'm off the call, Ross. Come on, you don't want to. Do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to get a meal from both of you two. Come on, you gotta yeah. Don't work <laughs> both, both angles. Get more bang for your buck. Oh boy. All right. Well, again, media next Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Austin Aries will be on the call next Thursday starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and I appreciate B.S. and Allie very much for a very entertaining, very uh, stomach-filling uh, 
<laughs> conference call. Very, very, very informative. <laughs> I was going to say, it's so informative. All that food and coffee talk is great. <laughs> we appreciate you, Ralph. You guys. Thank you guys very much, and we'll talk to the media next week. Awesome. You're Thank man. you. Bye, guys.